good afternoon come on you can do better than this good afternoon thank you i was listening to the introduction not that the introduction was not appropriate but i thought before i start my speech i would like to share with you how someone was very creative when that person had to introduce me so my first day as the dean of the kellogg school of management was september 11th 2001 first time in the us history a person of color was made the dean of a top business school and i was welcoming 500 mba students 8:30 the ceremony started and around 8:45 which was 9:45 in new york the head of corporate communications came to the podium and in my years he said dean jain there has been a terrorist attack on the us soil you need to shut up before the cell phone starts ringing just imagine nobody would have ever anticipated an event like 9/11 wo kehte na ki ye ek acha shubh din nahi tha to start the dean's job anyway you cannot undo what has happened i went back to my office and a person came to see me many of you may have heard his name professor philip cotler he is considered to be the father of marketing and he is a professor at northwestern he came to see me and said deepak very sorry what happened today but i have come here for a special request i said professor cotler what can i do for you he said that i was supposed to give a talk in the month of october where about 3000 people were expected and his son in law was involved in an accident and and the date of the surgery was the same day when professor cotler has to deliver the lecture so he said deepak would you substitute for me i said professor cotler the world is coming to listen to you why do you want to put me in that awkward situation and today you have the perfect excuse because of 911 everyone would understand and they can postpone the event he said let me talk to the organizer the organizer said postponing the event would be a logistical nightmare we will accept whoever you recommend so he came back to me and said deepak you have to do it i said i am not going to say no so i flew to this place the talk was at 9 in the morning at 8 o'clock i had breakfast with the organizer when he looked at me he almost had an heart attack he says is this guy going to speak today so he asked me what do you do professor cotler just told him i would send a colleague and no other details so i said until recently i was a professor of marketing and since september i am the dean of the business school now he was a businessman he didn't know what it meant to be a dean so i told him the roles and responsibilities of a dean and i said we set the vision for the school and when faculty members have to go somewhere to teach or take a leave of absence they have to get the permission from the dean so i said in some sense the dean of a business school is like a ceo of a corporation but very different salary package so don't get me wrong that we are not there he said now i know how to introduce you he didn't even ask my name the event started he came to the podium said good morning everyone said good morning he asked the audience how many of you have heard the name philip cotler all the hands went up he told the audience today i present to you the boss of phil cotler that was the introduction that was there and i thought a person <laughs> just imagine a person born in tejpur assam i am from tejpur studied in hindi rashtra bhasha vidyalaya there never thought a day would come when a person would be introduced as the boss 
of the father of marketing. And I attribute to this, to our Indian sanskar, to our education system, and the biggest thing that I felt is Indian parents' commitment to education. Indian parents would spend all the resources to give their children the best education. I have been blessed with that, and I hope that flame of excellence in education continues to be the mantra for India. So when I speak at global conferences, when people ask me, how would you brand India? I say, India is the global hub for human talent. World mein isse badhiya talent kahi nahi hoga. I started the journey on the being the Dean of Kellogg, then Dean of France, then I was the head of an institution in Thailand, then the president of a school in China, and now Mukesh Bhaiya has asked me to have, be the head of Geo Institute as the vice chancellor. So when I look at the countries I have served, it accounts for 72% of the global population. So I want to thank Mr. Batra and Bhuvnesh to ask me to just share with you some reflections on what we would like India to be in 2047. And I always say, brand is not the promise you make, but the delivery of the promise. This is very important. It's not the slogans. It's the delivery of the promise. And November 1962, some of you may remember, was the day when China attacked India. And they came from the northeastern part. That area used to be called NEFA, Northeastern Frontier Agency, which is Arunachal Pradesh today. And I remember I had just started my KG class. The teacher came to the class and said the Chinese army is less than 50 kilometers from the school, and the government of India has asked us to vacate the town by 7 PM. I remember we were running as refugees. In those days, there was no bridge on river Brahmaputra. So we had to wait overnight. Next morning, cross the ferry. It took us seven days to reach Rohtak, where we are originally from. November 1962. 55 years later, it's just a coincidence, the same day of the Chinese aggression, that refugee of the Chinese war was appointed as the president of China Europe International Business School, and that refugee is in presence of you. Just imagine that this is again the power of, so not to be too personal, but I believe education is the essence, and after education, the next important thing we all have to work is towards the health. And then comes this whole issue about the environment and others, and I will just share with a few things with you. So what are some of the global trends that we are seeing today, and why this industry is important? First, first time in the world history, there are more people over 65 than under five which means elderly care is going to be more important than child care. Just imagine, there would be more people above 65 than under five, and by 2030, there would be one billion people over 65. And I will come to that, why this is important. Second is increase in longevity. Advances in medical research and new drug discovery are going to make people live healthier and longer. This is a fact. Decline in fertility rates. Young couples are unwilling to have children for fear of compromising career growth over childbearing, and they are also interested in traveling around the world. In America, we use a term for them called DINKS, D-I-N-K-S, double income, no kids. So they are more flexible, and the fourth is move towards urbanization. Building the roads, etc. Minister also mentioned about this thing today, the footprints. And just to give you an example, because last five years I spent in Shanghai, 
65% of China's population limits. Now, these are few trends. Why this is important? Because what are the implications? The implications for the hospitality industry. The two most important target segments for the hospitality industry are the elderly citizens, means 65 plus, and the young couples, which I said, both working, they want to take vacation and travel around the world. Just to give an example, China has 270 million people, 80 million potential tourists. This morning, there were two very significant questions that came. Mr. Keswani, you was also there when, in one of the sessions. People were asking, how come India is struggling to get 10 million tourists? I was the dean of INSEAD, and I tell you, when I lived to live in Paris, a Choti Si Baat, a 1969 movie, I think, an evening in Paris. Shami Kapoor, Sharmila Tagore ki. Usko dekhne ke liye hum log jab gaye the, kabhi socha nahi tha ki that an evening in Paris for me would become every evening in Paris. Jab mein Paris mein dean tha. So anyway, Paris gets 80 million tourists a year. 80 million. And when I was the head of Chula Longkorn University in Thailand, Thailand gets close to 30 million tourists, and of which about 10 plus pre-COVID was Chinese, and more than a million tourists come just from India. So there must be something that what we are not doing or we need to, don't look at the problem. We need to find a solution how we make India the global hub for hospitality also. And we can do this and I will share with you how. So this is there, I'm going to share with you. The older segment, we call them the silver generation. Keshwari sahab, aap bhi usme hai, hum bhi usme belong hai. And they are willing to spend. What is for hospitality industry? You need people who have time, money, and the passion. And this is there with this generation. And what we need to do is, I call them to roll out innovative carpets to make their travel enjoyable, enjoyable and memorable. So this is the trends and these are the implications. Now, kya karna chahiye? What are the growth opportunities? The first, as I said, is a very big industry that would grow worldwide is consumer hospitality that includes travel, tourism, hotels, restaurants. You can call restaurants as F&B, food and beverage and others, I just call it. The second is we need to keep these people engaged. Our 60, 65 people plus, you need to keep them engaged. And digital media entertainment, if you look at Apple, today, Airlines have less problem, flights getting delayed, so long you can offer the passengers free Wi-Fi. Then they would be engaged, they won't complain about anything. Unko fit drinks ki bhi nahi hai. We need to think about what would keep them engaged. And the third, this issue also came today, is consumer wellness, which includes health care and wealth care. When I was the dean of Kellogg, I created a program for all my senior alumni, financial, wellness ke upar mein on healthy investing because you cannot rely on retirement income. So these are the three major growth opportunities in the world. And today we are here to look at the number one, but one and two are connected. And I will show you how. Just to be short, we have seen this cycle. Phase one is learning. Second is earning, third is enjoying, and I'm talking, and fourth is giving back, to give back to society. So as the dean of Kellogg School and INSEAD, the brand that I built for Kellogg was, I used to tell students, by joining the Kellogg School, you are starting your journey from success to significance. But first be successful. Don't be an idealist, I want to solve the poverty problem of Africa. Build a successful platform, then people would worship you and listen to you. And significance is to give back to the community. And I was telling Bhuvnesh that one work that I have been working recently, we established a university in Bangladesh called AUW, Asian University for Women. 
And my basic premise is, if you educate women from these countries, and I tell you the countries that we have targeted, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Syria. And if you take women and educate them, they won't send their children to madrasas. They know the power of education. And this university has been very successful just for women. My point is we all need to think about hospitality not just as enjoyment, but also as a way to serve society and community. So what are the target destination? Now this is something I will end my talk later on because this is my wish what I want to create in India. Japan, US, India, China, and East. I call the juice of tourism. This is the juice of tourism. These are the countries that I am going to target and look at some comparison with what they have done to attract and made the hospitality industry so successful. So a good cross-national and cross-cultural study and having alliances with these countries, hospitality industry would be a big thing for us. So what are the India hospitality industry? First is why we can do this. First is genes. Guest as manifestation, ye hamare sanskar hai. And we need to build on this. This is in the DNA. So why not make use of something that we are very good at? Second is place. And third is the infrastructure. In one of the sessions, this issue was brought that for us to make the 10 million, 30 or 40 million, we need to have a very, uh, we need to have better infrastructure than what we have today. That is true. But let me tell you, we should not be in the business of complaint or anything. And not to be too personal, but I tell you, my, when I became the dean, and we used to get students for the MBA program. So we used to do a marketing event. And this, I tell you, I had a new dean, 2002, month of February in Chicago. I was welcoming about 450 potential students for MBAs. And we have a consortium of seven schools, Harvard, Stanford, MIT, Kellogg, Chicago, Columbia, and Wharton. And I used to be the chair of this group. So I was making my presentation why they should come to the Kellogg School. I made my presentation. A student raised the hand and said, Dean Jane, I have a question for you. I said, yes. I said, I listened to all what you are saying. What are you going to do about the Chicago weather? That day, the temperature, actual temperature was minus 18 degrees centigrade. February is very cold. Now at the podium, I can say, Oh, there is not, this is beyond a dean's control. But let me tell you, not every question deserves an answer, but no question should be also left not answered. So let me tell you what I told him. I was just standing there and I said that, Mr. X, I have one piece of advice for you. In life, you should believe in the principle of a refrigerator. Things kept in a cooler environment stay fresh for a long time. After that, he never asked me the second question. I said, just accept what is the culture of acceptance is. You will stay in the room, do your work better. So we should not look at India as an issue that infrastructure is not good and so on. We need to work towards what we have, what we can make the best use of it, and how we build a culture of acceptance, integrity, and something that we need to do, and I will tell you what I have in mind, just that would be the last slide. So when we think of investing in infrastructure, economic investment is necessary, functional, and emotional. First, my advice to the younger generation I was speaking today to some people, this is a very good industry to be in, but this is not a very high paying industry. Both hotels and airlines. For many years, I was a board of director of United Airlines. And I was, uh, just one credit I want to take is, during my board directorship, 
I got Air India as a part of the Star Alliance. Initially, there were some resistance because of Air India's schedule and others, but I said Air India is a great airline and it would be become better in future. So we need to think about that. Young generation employment scope is there. This is not hospitality industry. We should call it the taste of India. When you come, you look at the ancient cultures, you will see a very big thing there and brand building like France and Thailand have done. India at 100 should be a time for recognition. So what, this is my final thing. We need to create a world-class institute for hospitality and healthy aging. And by institute, I don't mean another school to teach programs where we do world-class research on how this industry, India can become the source, as I said, for human talent. We can really create a lot of good work, publish a journal, and create what I have in mind. I did this in China. We created a program called HEMBA, Executive MBA in Hospitality Management. An executive MBA targeted towards senior people. I want to create this, build alliances with top institutions in Jewish countries. And in all the Jewish countries, I have been one of the heads. So we should work towards building an alliance. The future of competition is collaboration. That's what I want to say. And focus on all these AI, et cetera, which are resources that can help us. And this is a dream that I have we can create. And I have a talk. I'm meeting Mr. Ambani also this next week how we can work together to make India the global hub for human hospitality also. So my final words is, when you look at hospital in the industry, revenue is the urgency. Reputation is the currency. And respect is going to be the legacy. This is when I went to, you remember 1962, my father was take, taking me to school. I asked my father, Mala, Bauji, school kyo jana hai? Mala, beta, you go to school to learn the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Aaj, when I'm at a different position, I think for India is the other three R's. Yes, revenue is necessary. Recognition, reputation is our currency and respect the Indian's respect is going to be our legacy. So we need to build a platform which would be a place, peaceful, respectful, and a safer world. And if you look at the world today, I consider India to be the most safest destination. So this is the time for us to leverage and make India the destination of choice. Taste the juice, and J-U-I is in the center. CE. So we are the, you can Nimbu ka nichod jo hai. The real rush is here. And again, thank you all. Just staying, standing here <laughs> makes me feel there is so much you can do. And not to be too emotional, but I will tell you a small thing. My father, was born with one eye, and later on he lost his other eye. So for most of his life, he's come completely blind. And my grandfather was a school teacher. So he said, my father said, my name is Jagdish, he said, my name is Jagdish, he said, my name is Deepak, you need to give light to the world. Okay? And my father always said one thing, that, sorry to speak in Hindi, but he said, my name is Deepak, इंसान जीतता अपनी औलाद से है और हारता भी अपनी औलाद के आगे है। अगर बच्चों को अगर अच्छी परवरिश नहीं दो तो पेरेंट्स के लिए वो दुख की बात है। मेरे मदर की डेथ बहुत जल्दी हो गई थी। माय फादर वाज ब्लाइंड। सो फॉर 11 इयर्स व्हेन आई वाज डीन एट द कैलॉक स्कूल, आई यूज्ड टू कम एंड सी Saturday night, I went here, and I went to the hotel, Sunday night, I went to the flight, and Monday morning, back at 5.30, 7.30, breakfast. In 13 years, I didn't miss any breakfast meeting. I made 149 trips. Anyway, in 2008, I had a lot of trouble in October. I went every week. 
लास्ट विजिट में ही वॉज इन आई सी यू दिल्ली में फ़ोन बजा सो आई टुक माई फ़ोन एंड आई केम आउट फिर जब मैं वापस आया तो डॉक्टर आए बोले आप अपने फादर को रोहतक ले जा सकते इस कंडीशन इज स्टेबल हम रोहतक आ गए तो अगले दिन मुझे वापस जाना था तो मैं घर से निकल रहा था फादर के पहुँच हुए तो बोला बेटा कल जब मैं आई में था दिल्ली में एक फ़ोन बजा था किसका फ़ोन था तो मैंने कहा भाजी मुकेश अंबानी साहब का फ़ोन था वो आपकी तबीयत के बारे में पूछ रहे थे बोले अंबानी रिलायंस वाले मैंने कहा हाँ हाँ मेरे सर पे हाथ रख के बोले बेटा तूने मुझे आज जीता दिया और मैं वहाँ से फ्लाइट लेके शिकागो पहुँचा और लैंड किया वो एंड वो चल बसे उनके लिए वो निर्वाण का दिन था सो माई पॉइंट टू ऑल ऑफ यू हमारे संस्कार जो हैं वी हैव ऑल समथिंग इन अस दैट वी नीड टू गिव बैक टू द वर्ल्ड in terms of our performance in terms of creating a legacy and i tell you the best of india is ahead of us we all need to work towards to make this country a country that people would remember for jaisa pehle kehte the sone ki chidiya thi i have no doubt india would again be the destination of education hospitality and humanity insaniyat so thank you all for giving me this opportunity and from today mai kehta hu ek mera i have a saying no challenge ahead of you is greater than the force behind you deepak jain is always behind you let's all work together to make this country a destination of choice